I'm Ian Dale, and I want to make a confession. I used to be a political lobbyist. I know, shameful, isn't it? Um, I ran a political consultancy uh, from 1990 to 1996. And I also worked as an in-house lobbyist for the Ports Industry Trade Association for a couple of years. So I know a bit about how the world of lobbying works. And bear in mind, this was quite a long time ago. And there is now a regulatory code for lobbyists, uh, particularly pol political consultants. They don't like to be called lobbyists anymore. They're public affairs consultants. Um, and we've all known that there are occasions when lobbyists overstep the mark. They use their influence in a malign way. There is actually nothing wrong with political lobbying. If you think about it, if you want to persuade the government or even a local council to change a regulation or change the law, there's absolutely nothing wrong with making representations to the council or to the government. Uh, Often legislation is improved by those representations and it doesn't really matter who makes those representations as long as it's honest and transparent. And that's where David Cameron seems to have fallen foul of the rules because uh, in relation to his consultancy, I think that's the right word for it, with Greensill Capital, um, it doesn't seem as though he really abided by the conventional rules. Um, he texted mates. Now, I suppose in some ways... All of us, if, if, some, if we know somebody in a position of power and we have a concern about something that is either going wrong or we want to change something, um, we can use that relationship to do so. And I've done that on occasion. But the difference from when I've done it is when I, it hasn't been anything that would benefit me. Um, I have rung up a cabinet minister on occasion and said, look, this, this law that you're about to pass, do you, un do you understand the consequence that it could mean for this group of people? And they either ignore what I say or they think, oh, maybe I'll look into that. Um, now, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But when David Cameron as prime minister said he thought that lobbying would be the next big scandal, this was in 2010, this was after the MP's expenses scandal, I don't imagine he was thinking, yeah, and it'll involve me. He used the phrase for MP's expenses, sunlight is the best form of disinfectant, i.e. everyone should be transparent about any lobbying that they do. Uh, and generally speaking, lobbying is quite transparent in this country. All of the political consultancies have to declare who their clients are. If you want to know who, which political consultancy works for, I don't know, British Airways or whatever, you can find that out very, very uh, simply just by looking at the parliamentary website or the, uh, the trade association, Association of Professional Political Consultants, I think that's what they're called. Um, but there's this sort of murky middle ground where you have politicians who've been in office who then get appointed to the boards of companies who people always suspect are then using that influence with their former colleagues who are still in power. And that is where we are now. But it actually gets worse than that. Because today we have a so-called top civil servant called Bob Crothers who was in charge of um, procurement um, he, he was actually working for Greensill Capital at the same time that he was working as a civil servant for the government. Now, I can't understand how that could have happened. Angela Regal, who I talked to in the news hour, she similarly couldn't understand how that could have happened. So I want to know in this hour what your views are on this. Do you sort of you either shrug your shoulders, in which case, if you do, you probably won't phone in. But a lot of people just think, well, this is what goes on in politics. It's always been a bit grubby. I've always clung to the view, and I think it's actually broadly right, that in this country, we don't have a lot of endemic political corruption. Um, obviously, there is the exception to that. But compared to many other countries, I think we have a pretty clean political system. But you have sort of so-called scandals like this uh, pop up and you maybe think that's a pretty naive point of view.